Morning folks, Wednesday morning, a brisk spring morning, a bit overcast here and there but still plenty blue sky as well. And we're on day, what is it, four or five with the Stani 2002 and in it this morning I have some uh, Jermaine's Rich Dark Flake. Haven't smoked that in a while. So uh, Rich Dark Flake is a uh, Virginia Burley. Although I don't generally smoke Burleys, this is not your classic Burley flavored blend. I've smoked this on and off over the years and uh, since the first time I managed to get some I've managed to have some in stock always on hand if I want to. Um, as I say I don't smoke it very often. I always call this the champagne of tobacco blends. Because to me It has the flavor, a little bit of the flavor of white wine, sweet white wine. Although I do find that when you get it fresh, it's kind of a bit bland. And like most things, it matures with age. Well, it improves with age, I should say. But the flavor profile itself is not the fullest. It's quite a thin profile, but it's very, very nice when it's good. So I reckon that if you manage to get some, put it away for three or four years. And uh, it should be good after that. Although I do find with Germains quite often that there is, certainly in the last few years, that there's been a little bit of variety in the flavors of the blends in other words uh, of the same blend but sometimes it feels more mature already than others so what I mean is that sometimes if I open up a rich dark flake um, smoke it when I get it it feels too young to smoke and sometimes it feels very ready to smoke, even though I've only just bought it. So I think it just could be that some uh, crops are better than others. And also perhaps that Germains have managed to age it a little bit longer before they released it. That could be the difference. But I definitely see a difference. You know, if you buy uh, for, for argument's sake, McBaron's, I don't know, vanilla roll cake, you're going to get a fairly consistent flavour regardless. You know, it's always going to taste the same. But uh, Jermaine's tobaccos, I kind of liken it to uh, the difference between, say, machine-made cigars and handmade premium cigars, Cuban cigars, 
where the Cuban cigars, you know, their, their flavor profile can be quite thin, but when they mature and when they're right, they're amazing. Um, but when they're young, when they're green, you know, they're not particularly nice. Um, and I've kind of likened Jermaine's tobaccos to sort of Cuban cigars. They need time to mature. Um, whereas uh, a machine rolled cigar, you know, you're, not, you're, you're getting a fairly consistent flavor because they're, they're not premium. They're not designed to give you a very, very sort of refined flavor profile. And, um, you know, maturing them won't make a huge bit of difference. That's how I, so that's a, kind of an analogy, I think, which is appropriate for Jermaine's tobacco. Um, I think they just improve with age. Well, it's true that most tobacco improves with age, but you wouldn't, for instance, bother aging, uh, um, you know, a goopy aromatic, cheap aromatic, because it's not designed for that. To show it to you once again because I can't resist showing it to you. The gorgeous pipe, nice smooth rim. Beautiful. Well, really, somebody asked me what actually um, attracted me to this uh, this pipe back in when I first bought the, my first one of these. Um, and for me, it was obviously the billiard shape, the, the bowl shape is very nice. Um, but for me, it was this beautiful S curve. So you've got the S shape there, um, but it's so nicely done, so gracefully done. Um, there's no sharp turns, there's no dramatic bends. It's just a very, very beautiful, graceful S shape. And um, it's definitely, this pipe has definitely informed my shaping uh, style, I guess, to some extent um, with some pipes. It's kind of engraved on my psyche, this shape. You can imagine that I, how, I, how and why I regretted selling this first one that I had. The first one that I had, um, it's a good few years ago now, I had bought it new old stock. Smoked it a lot. But so far, I must say, this one is breaking in very well, or re-breaking in very well. Um, and I'm liking it. It's, you know, flavors are really getting there. They're not 100% there yet, but they're not far off. I'm not getting tongue bite anymore. So, the omens are good for this pipe. Um, should be finishing up a couple of really, really nice pipes today. I've got one Eskimo shape, uh, kind of Eskimo shape, um, which should have some nice grain. It's all stained up and ready for buffing. And then yesterday I did a commission, which was a cauldron uh, pipe, um, but uh, with some interesting sort of design elements to it. But uh, I'm not sure if it will end up being a commission because it's, it came out a little bit larger, I think, than the customer wants. So I have to really get his approval firsthand before I do the video. And um, as long as he's happy, then it'll, obviously it'll stay a commission. If not, it'll be available. Um, the shape is a cauldron with a plateau top. So with the plateau top, obviously, in order to retain it, I can't trim the top. Um, and I guess I could have trimmed the bottom of the bowl before I started drilling it, but when you're doing the cauldron shape, it's um, you kind of I'm very hesitant to remove any briar because 
Um, the way it works, it's really quite complicated to shape. Number one, it's difficult to do when it's on the lathe, the, bit, the part of it that you do on the lathe, and then the shaping that you do afterwards on the sanding wheel is, is not straightforward. Um, so I, I, I'm hesitant to take off any briar um, from the block other than a very rough outline, uh, outline which I do on the bandsaw. So I'm therefore, to some extent, stuck with the height of the, the block. And um, I suppose the only thing I could have done is ch chosen a smaller block in the first place. Um, but as I say, I, when I'm working on a cauldron shape, I like to have as much briar available as possible because there's quite a lot of... Um, there's a lot of sort of chipping away at the shape in order to get the right shape. And this one worked out beautiful. The shape on it is just stunning. The, the plateau as well, it's such a level plateau. The way it was positioned on the block when I cut the rough shape on the bandsaw allowed for a beautiful plateau. It really, really worked out very nice. There's a shank adornment on there which I've never used before, which is very, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to see how that kind of finishes up with the final sort of once it's all polished up. The colouring is different. Um, it's a, like a moss green kind of colouring. Um, and there's a part rustication, part smooth. So it's gonna, it should be an interesting looking pipe when it's done. And the stem is also very unusual. It's a hand cut ebonite, a beautiful piece of ebonite as well. It's a limited edition ebonite. And it blends with the colors very nicely. So all in all, I'm really excited to see how that pipe works out. And if it's too big for the commissioner, I'm okay with that as well, because hopefully it'll sell. It's a it should be a beautiful pipe. And it's a pipe I'd be happy to keep myself as well. So I'm, I'm happy with it, whatever happens. And I think that's it for this morning. Happy hump day. I wish you all well. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll catch you on the next one.